I thought I'd start with a story to shake off the nerves. Six years ago, I received my first smartphone as a birthday present. And I was absolutely delighted because I would finally keep up with whatever videos or posts my friends were sharing, which I didn't have access to previously. But now, I wish I didn't have such abundant access to it because I couldn't see what kind of person I'll become today if my growth wasn't impacted so much by the smartphone that I had. Now, a question for everyone. Please raise your hand if you think you spend more than an average of six hours online every single day, just by estimation. Six hours online, not an exact number, just estimation. Well, that's actually quite a few of us, as I can see. And we can all agree that six hours is a lengthy period of time, right? A lot will be accomplished in six hours. But maybe you'll be more surprised to see that more than 38% of teenagers spend more than an average of eight hours on social media alone. And since that is the largest portion of this pie chart, I could even argue that it's normal to spend eight hours on social media every single day. But that's a third of the day that you have already devoted to social media. Here's another question. Please take a guess, just inside your heads, at which age group spends the most time online, period. Age group, just a number. Do you have a number now? Okay. And maybe to some of your disappointment or surprise, it's actually people who are older than the age of 25. <laughs> However, notice that the youngest age at which this pie chart starts is at 18 years old, while the average age at which a child receives a smartphone worldwide is at the age of 11.6. Which means that I take any child from around the world, preferably from the more economically developed region, he or she will know how to use a smartphone by then. The Greek philosopher Aristotle, who is often considered to be the first scientist, has concluded through natural observation, and I quote, man is by nature a social animal. By this quote, he means that man will benefit more from a civilized society. However, decades of neuroscience research has indeed supported the claim that humans are inherently social. But why? Well, because we are more resourceful together, we offer each other consolation, and we are able to achieve feats that we will never accomplish in solitude. And social media, as the name suggests, allows us to do just that, to socialize. So next, let's play an incredibly complex game called Name the App. What is this? Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, what's that? Down into numerous predictable, so your personality has already been broken down 
to numerous predictable categories by their AI. But why would they do this? Well, because it's an extra source of revenue. The more time they spend on that, the more ads they will see. And an app with high user traffic is more likely to attract businesses to purchase ad space on there to market their goods or services to a wider audience. And in return, the hosting app will receive ad revenue. On one hand, you have the award system. The other, you have the machine learning algorithms. Put them together, and you have just about the perfect throne for an addiction. But we all know that an addiction of any kind always does more harm than good. So this leads onto a few problems. The first is the fragmentation of our attention. The splitting your focus amongst multiple different tasks. For example, I'll be working on my TEDx group, look at my phone, watch some YouTube videos, or maybe take a nice long walk at the garage. As this habit continues to develop, you will permanently reduce the capabilities to concentrate in the long term. Secondly, and again, this is a question for you all, which you don't have to tell me, how would you evaluate your self-worth? How relevant, important, good or bad you are? Well, for adults, maybe a relative income, a successful marriage, or career achievements. But for teenagers, well, mostly, it's just social comparison. We benchmark our performances against others. These might be aspects such as grades, height, appearance, or maybe just having a bad haircut. But social comparison mainly happens on social media, because that's where we get to see the holistic sides of another stranger's life. But what you think is just another life post, part heart heart emoji, is actually a carefully curated photo paired with a deep deep mold over text to make themselves seem more attractable. And this is when you start to play a losing game. You're comparing yourself against the 15-year-old millionaires, 15-year-old models, 15-year-old entrepreneurs. Comparing yourself to a flawless figure that doesn't exist only leads to lower self-confidence, self-loathing, and disappointment. And although you can't really prove them, sorry, and although they may very well be, be fake, you can't exactly prove them wrong either. And thirdly, every single corner on the internet, app, website, community, they have their own little circles, just culture. Their codes of conduct online. A lot of us may realize, but not point out, that we actually talk about ourselves a lot online compared to real life. That's because we all take advantage of the anonymity it provides. No one knows who you really are behind the profile picture of yours. In fact, a lot of teenagers have an online and offline persona. Someone offline who may seem shy, reserved, introverted, might be very bright, social, talkative, online. But we can only do so in real life because social norms expect us to maintain a certain level of modesty to avoid being seen as narcissistic. The internet is great for receiving self, for receiving recognition, which ties back to the award system that I talked about earlier. And it's great for a quick sense of gratification too. However, the internet is a terrible coping mechanism. You don't have to look people in the eyes when you talk, you don't have to use your voice, and you don't even have to go outside. Because most of your online achievements will never equate to similar magnitude if you were to translate them to real life. It's almost as useless as video game currency in real life. These problems compiled lead to a recent feature called Compassionate Search. Here on Chinese TikTok, I have searched up the word suicide just by itself without any context. Now, I want to commit suicide or how to commit suicide. This feature detects any sensitive keywords in your search and it tries to provide help accordingly. I've searched the word suicide and then the app has tried to provide help by giving me the number to a 24-hour suicide prevention helpline. If we rewind, let's say, 8 to 9 years back to 2015 or 2014, which isn't exactly the stone age for social media, 
you wouldn't find a compassionate search anywhere. Searching this on Twitter back in the day just gave me the most liked, commented, or shared posts with the most traffic. And a compassionate search is a result of 85% of adults and adolescents worldwide having low self esteem. Oops, sorry. Depression, anxiety, and behavioral disorders being the number one leading cause of disability amongst adolescents, and suicide being the fourth leading cause of death amongst 15 to 29 year olds. So, how can we resolve or at least lessen this problem? Seeking help is a great option, but we don't often do so because of peer pressure. In the eyes of many teenagers, seeking help is the same as being perceived weak. However, seeking help is actually a sign of strength, that you're able to identify and face your own flaws and you're making a conscious effort to better yourself. Secondly, practicing mindfulness and meditation have shown to improve psychological capabilities such as self-regulation and awareness which directly influences your self-confidence. MRI scans from neuroscience research has shown that meditation has the ability to restructure your brain for better emotional regulation and stress reduction. Lastly, we can educate awareness. Because, let's be real here, social media is here to stay for the long term. And this may pretend world that we live in always tells us that we're not good enough and we're not trying hard enough, which is why moderation is key. In today's world, we may very likely be the most self-centered and depressed generation yet which is why we need to learn to control and protect ourselves because we are all much more amazing, capable, and brilliant people than who we think we are. Thank you for listening.